<laughs> what's up guys don't know what's going on with the weird glare today in the video but nothing I can do about it try to fix it anyway got a few things here um, first thing I want to show is our good buddy Ian who's better known as Ronan LA that's his channel name Ronan R-O-N-I-N-L-A uh, just out of the goodness of his heart sat there and sent me some books and, and the guy pays attention to my videos because he, he sent me some stuff I needed so um, here you go this is what he got me just to get on there he got me uh, I think this is volume two of elementals number one which you know I've been collecting just to have a little something different an upgrade of the first series of number one which I thought was very cool uh, a special another one that's an upgrade and then he sent me a bunch of Cerebus and I tell you what man I'm really appreciating these Cerebus a lot more um, Cerebus was 300 issues. It was the life story of a uh, aardvark, you know. Uh, pretty much the reason I think he made him an animal is that, you know, to show how out of place in the world he is. Started out as a Conan, the, the Barry Winsler Smith, Roy Thomas era parody of Conan, satire maybe, and it became so much more. And, and, uh, and uh, the story arcs, you know they go up and down but he said that was by design because that's how everybody's life is but anyway I got an early issue here number 41 and these are really good uh, Cerebus this flame this carrot starting starring the flaming carrot uh, never read this one if I understand this this one's been a little bit hard to find I don't know if it's worth any money or anything like that but you know this is one of those issues I've never seen out in the wild okay uh, Cerebus 250 with the going home arc where he was you know on the downward turn there um, and actually Dave Sam came out and said he should have ended service at issue 250 um, going home to 60 and it was also always prophesized uh, in service travels and stuff he talked to a uh, a being uh, who told him that his future was he was going to die alone and you know by himself and everything which is actually kind of scary when you think about 285 and 288 292 where you see service is old and alone and basically what you kind of find out is that all his friends sort of died and everything 298 and I've read issue 300 and I wish I'd bought it the day it came out and then this is uh, service archive archives number three I flipped through this and this is a bunch of uh, I guess this was a mini series by Dave Sim and it's really fascinating because it shows some of his earlier work that he was doing for submissions not so much that it was printed I don't want to say too much about it because I've only seen this one issue but it's full of um, rejection letters and his earlier work and you know this one this one was focused on uh, Charlton Comics where he's trying to get into him and it's full of tons of rejection letters uh, with a little bit of keep up the good work and you're showing improvement from Charlton Comics and he made little comments here and there in here saying that, you know, basically the problem was is I wouldn't draw like Charlton Comics, which whatever that means. And he's always kind of wondered what would have happened if, you know, he'd kind of gave in and did it the third way. Not so much him being bitter or um, or rebellious, you know, just sort of, you know, uh, I think it's, this is all about reflection, you know. So, okay, so thank you very much, Ian. Go check out Ian's channel. Uh, I've enjoyed those. Uh, actually, those are the only real comics I've sat down and actually read. I have not been in the mood to read a lot. Okay, uh, and now to segue in between another haul here. Uh, went out job hunting the other day and stopped by a few places. I think these are two of these are from Goodwill, but uh, I stopped by the library and got these for 50 cents a piece. And I think these are from 1980. I remember seeing these in the house when I was a kid. Yeah, 1980. Conan and the spider god i'm gonna get that label off from 1980 now these are not um written by robert e howard these are l sprague l sprague de camp uh so i've heard nothing but good things about these and i remember these were some of the books that i remember people were arguing about who who owned what you know so we got that one these were 50 cents a piece from the library road of kings uh by carl edward wagner and it was really cool having these in my house. You know, I, I knew Conan. I knew about Conan because about a year later the movie came out. And I like this one. We get a uh, fold out of uh, Conan the Rebel, which was cool by Paul Anderson. And I've read Paul Anderson before. He's outstanding. And it's uh, P O U L. Then I got this at the Goodwill. 
uh, The Rocketeer on DVD. Such a good freaking movie. It's not even, I mean, it's based on Dave Stevens' Rocketeer, and it was a pretty faithful adaption. Jennifer Connelly playing his girlfriend, who was based on Betty Page, is perfect. But it's just a wicked little adventure in the vein of kind of like Indiana Jones and the lightheartedness of it of a stuntman who finds an experimental rocket packet and you know he doesn't know how to do it you know like he doesn't know how to make the thing work which was really cool really good movie and then I found this for 50 cents at the Goodwill and I needed this one volume 3 of, uh, of The Preacher and uh, this is a ninth printing so it's no big deal the only thing wrong with it is there's a bend in the back okay you, know, you can see the big gigantic dog ear and here's, here's what's bad. When I see a damaged comic, I have done this stuff since the late 70s to where I can pretty much do a good educated guess on what kind of damage it, it was. I have a machine man number one that I can tell the way it is. Somebody left in a book bag or a toy box. And this one is damaged from, it looks like somebody took it to the shelf and when they pushed it in, it just perfectly folded in and they pulled it out. But that's it, 50 cents, nothing else wrong with it, not printing, you know, I needed it, so yay, you know, that was cool. Right, and then, oh no, the box, the box, the box hit the computer. Alright, so basically this was 10 bucks at a flea market. Uh, again, I was out job hunting and they just happened to be open and I'm getting to know the guys. Uh, I might talk about his uh, business if it goes off, you know, but uh, all of this was 10 bucks. I mean, I had it in my pocket, he gave me a good deal. Uh, first thing that was in there is uh, these were all in one some of these were uh, I thought they were one comic and as I was just going through all his stacks of comics and stuff I didn't really pay attention I may have noticed and forgot by the time I got up there but no I didn't hoodoo them on purpose or anything this time but uh, from 95 it's a vertigo book the books of fairy issues one two and three the covers are phenomenal uh, the interior art is not of that quality but it's still really good storytelling and th these are the, the fairies, the fae from uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman. So I was really happy to get this. Um, you know, Brown Carlton Ryder, Peter Gross uh, as the artist. Uh, I don't know anything else Bronwyn Carlton did or has done. But, uh, you know, just a nice little mini series there with uh, the, the Sandman universe. There's one. There's two. I really got to find out what's wrong with this camera. There's, and there's three. I don't know who did the covers, but they're phenomenal. Um, I got this just for you know, just to have it. Sandman number fifty. P. Craig Russell did a fantastic issue uh, that Neil Gaiman wrote called Ramadan, and Neil Gaiman actually did not do a script for this. He was kind of just writing down and talking to P. Craig Russell about what the story was going to be, and that's all P. Craig Russell did. He said, "Don't worry about writing the script. Just send me, you know, keep telling me how you want the story to go." So this one is actually more of a labor of love of P. Craig Russell, in my opinion, than Neil Gaiman. <clears throat> Probably kind of like the old Marvel style of writing, you know. This was in, now this was in there, and this is what I'm saying. This was in the same bag as that Sandman. I was really surprised. Um, I've heard people talk about this, but I don't think it really took off. The Private Lives of Curiouscuro, Leonardo da Vinci. This was a number one in a 10-issue miniseries. Uh, I know I didn't say that right. But this this seems like it might be an interesting read, uh, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, story of Leonardo da Vinci. So we'll see what happens with that. Not a lot to say about that. And this is what I'm talking about: new comics, man. From the get-go on my channel, to me, it's just ridiculous to pay full price for any comic. Uh, they always end up in dollar bins, uh, unless you absolutely know, um, you know that it's going to sell out and that's rare these days. I mean, I really can't think of one comic in the last 10 years that has shot up in value, you know, uh, that, you know, came out on the stands in the last 10 years. Seems like it's the older stuff, movie announcements and whatever people want to bullshit you about. But these are the Marvel reprints of uh, Miracle Man by the original writer. That's how they tag him in these, Alan Moore. And, you know, I got these because he got me, he, he gave me a really good deal on these. And there's like maybe one or two issues in here that I, I don't have. But uh, number five, uh, number six, and, you know, I tell you what, Marvel, in my opinion, has really dropped the ball. Number seven, on this Miracle Man stuff, because all anybody really wants to read that they've been waiting on is the last issue. That's like issue 25. And now they, I think the annual already came out. I get my stuff mail order if I do get anything 15% off 
uh, Grant Morrison came out, wrote a new uh, story in an annual. It's the first real new Miracle Man uh, story that everybody's been waiting on. This is basically a reprint and reprints the guy who created uh, Miracle Man, which is called Marvel Man, which is just a, a blatant, obvious uh, take on Captain Marvel and the Marvel family. Uh, so, you know, you get some background information, then they give you the color, they give you the original black and white pages in there, so basically you're reading the same story twice, so that's nice, number 10, Kid Miracle, but, uh, Miracle Man, but it was one of those series I was really thinking was getting hyped up over the years, because I think I read a ton of them, at least by 91, no, that's not right, 93, I read, you know, I read a little here and a little there, because it was Alan Moore, and then one of my buddies had a big stack right before I was going into the military, and I was just like, wow. Okay, and continuing with the $10 flea market haul, man, here's uh, the Invisibles. Uh, yes, this is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, this is a part one of Arcadia, number five. I think this is from the volume, volume one. Uh, very cool book. Um, Warner Brothers owns DC. Warner Brothers put out The Matrix, and The Matrix pulled a whole lot from Grant Morrison's uh, creator-owned Invisibles, if you will. And it came out with several volumes, and then this is the last one, which counted down backwards. Okay, from 12 to 1. Uh, here's number 10. They started getting great Brian Boland covers. Uh, great stuff. Number 9. And yes, Grant Morrison claims that he would take massive amount of drugs and then sit down to write this. And number uh, 12. And I, you know, I got a good deal on this one because this one's a little bit beat up. It's okay. So, slowly but surely getting those. And then I, I finally got this. I don't think I sold this. And if I did, I'll be surprised if I did, because I never give away Art Adams stuff. So it was definitely, just, you know, stolen, in my opinion. Uh, back in around 2008, I came home from work one day, and within a week or so, I started going through my comics and noticed they weren't packed real tight. And somebody had, you know, I live out in the country. I probably left my door unlocked, or, you know, it was somebody. I've, I've always had a suspicion who it was, but they cherry-picked through my comics. They didn't just take boxes. They went through and picked and chose. Because this came out the same month as uh, Gambit, um, Gambit's first appearance in Uncanny X-Men. Then the X-Men annual came out the same month, and some people would like to argue that this is Gambit's real first appearance. And the way I remember it, this did come out before uh, the X-Men book. But I think the X-Men book was bi-weekly there, so it's a close call. You know, they, they would go bi-weekly, Spider-Man and... The X-Men books and it seems like a few other things went to go by weekly in the summer back then. So, yeah, but there you go. I got that. Phenomenal shape. Uh, went ahead and got Omega Reds. Uh, first appearance, X-Men number five. I've got like a run of these and number five is missing. So, uh, I believe this is Omega Reds. First appearance. Uh, hot, hot, hot character there for a while in the 90s. Came and went. I think he, he actually made it in the uh, X-Men cartoon. Got another, couldn't turn this down. Got another number one issue of Southern Bastards. So there you go. Uh, going on with my uh, Strangers in Paradise by Terry Moore, the book that I, you know, avoided like the plague, and come to find out it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, number three from Homage. So that was kind of cool to find Terry Moore. Don't know if there's anything special about it. And then uh, I was really happy to get this because <clears throat> I'm a fan of his. I mean, when you're a kid and you're reading Mad Magazine and then you had uh, his little cartoons popping up on TV's bloopers and bleeps for whatever the TV show was in the 80s and stuff. Uh, Sergio Argonis 4 issue miniseries from uh, Dark Horse, uh, The Boogeyman. So, I have no idea what this is about, but it's Sergio, Mr. Guru the Wanderer heard himself. Two, two, three, and four. So yeah, that was cool to find. So very happy to find this. Alright guys, so I'm going to have a couple videos I want to shoot tonight. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be putting a few things on eBay. So I'm going to try to space it out to where I just do a video a day instead of like maybe putting two up. I haven't done a whole lot uh, comic book wise this month. Uh, I'm 10 pounds lighter and you know caught up on a lot of sleep finally when uh, insomnia doesn't hit. So, you know, but yeah, I got some stuff to put on eBay and that's the haul. So, alright guys, later.